I'm an art therapist in Seattle. I served underserved and vulnerable populations. But I'm starting to see that rural and small town communities may actually be the underserved and vulnerable populations, and that art therapy could be a solution for that. I grew up in Pocatello. I spent all of my childhood here. What I love most about Pocatello is its small town feel. I love the family-run businesses, the local eateries, and just the feeling of having a whole town know you. I love that my manager for the six years that I worked at the popcorn shop here in town was previously my preschool teacher. As much as we all love the charm of small town and rural communities, these communities have experienced major economic hits over the years and have been virtually forgotten. I'm sure I'm not alone in noticing the impact that these hits have had on these communities. Because of these events, small town and rural communities are starting to be defined by not what they have, but what they lack or what they've lost. For instance, I remember back in 2012 when INL, a major employer of Pocatello citizens, had to lay off upwards of 300 people in order to stay afloat. In more recent instances, major corporations, businesses, and retailers, chain restaurants either don't come to town or they have to close after just a few years in business a re repetition of a familiar story. When businesses close or move away, it hits these towns much more than bigger cities. And the impacts tend to start to find what small town is. I know a single mother of three who worked for the construction of the Hoku plant north of town and was unemployed for months when the company went bankrupt and they couldn't complete construction. As people experience these types of losses, they can both manifest as mental health challenges, but they can also exacerbate existing ones. These events affect the individual, but also affects the community as a whole. It is estimated that 2.6 million adults in rural communities are diagnosed with depression, and depression is the leading cause for substance use and suicide. The single mother I mentioned before, when she was trying to find employment to support her family, it was impossible for her to be a positive contributing member to her community. She was stressed, anxious, and depressed. She felt as if maybe she will never find work. She felt like a failure and a burden to those around her. She was just trying to survive. And what was she to do? Where was she to go to get financial assistance? And as her situation worsened and her anxiety and depression increased, where was she to go to get help with her mental health? It is reported by the American Journal of Preventative Medicine that 65% of rural counties don't have access to a psychiatrist, and 47% don't have access to a psychologist. Idaho is currently ranked last in the country for access to a psychiatrist. So even if she sought treatment, she may not have access to it after all. This leads me to believe that an increase in mental health services in rural communities, but specifically art therapy, could begin to help rebuild and repair these communities. I'm Tori Force, and as I mentioned before, I'm an art therapist, and I work at a community mental health organization in South Seattle. I work with children, teens, and families. With Pocatello being such a major part of my childhood, and now art therapy being a major part of my adulthood, I feel as though I have this dream that they can someday coincide and serve one another. This dream may seem far-fetched for a number of reasons. For one, mental health services are still heavily stigmatized in these communities. That is due to an overall stigma of mental health, but it's also due to the fact that communities such as this tend to confide in pastors, family, or friends. Additionally, as I mentioned, these services are widely inaccessible in these communities. So I do hope that art therapy can become a part of the small town narrative. Art therapy is an internationally recognized evidence-based practice in which art and talk are combined to offer healing in a deeper, more creative manner. Art therapy is, offers a sense of hope, a sense of purpose, and a sense of self. Humankind has an innate desire to create, and creating is healing within itself. And art therapy is not limited by age or artistic ability. It traverses the differences between us to help us understand who we really are. 
In its 50 years as a recognized field, art therapy has proven over and over again how powerful art is in the healing process of almost any diagnosis or ailment. And art therapy can offer nonverbal communication when one is at a loss for words, so to speak. And this is something you can't obtain in traditional talk therapy. The process of making art also has physiological effects on the person or the group creating the art together. So I know that some of you are thinking that art therapy sounds a bit hokey. And so we're gonna do an activity together. So as we mentioned before, you got a piece of paper and a crayon. And I want everyone to get those out. I'll grab mine too. And we're gonna do together what art therapists call a scribble drawing. So you've seen a two-year-old scribble all over a page uninhibited by anything, not a care in the world. We're going to channel those two-year-olds today and we're gonna do a scribble drawing all together. So when I say go, I want you to scribble all over your page for 15 whole seconds and I want your crayon to never leave the page. Are we all ready? Okay, go. Okay, stop. Now I just want you to write a word or phrase, something you might be feeling right now. This sort of closes out our drawing together. It also connects our right brain with our left brain. So just write something. So while we were drawing together, a number of things could have been happening within your body. For one, art can lower blood pressure. It can lower your heart rate and your breathing, which would lower any stress hormones you might have been feeling. And it can also release chemicals in your brain that creates a happy memory, a positive memory and connection with those around you. By creating art, we're creating connection. So scribble drawings are not all that art therapists do, of course. I'll share with you an interesting transformative session I had with a client. A few years ago, I was working with women and children transitioning out of homelessness, substance use, and domestic violence situations in a small town in Washington. And I had this client who had been an apprentice at a mechanic shop. And unfortunately, the mechanic shop couldn't keep up with the major corporations coming to town and had to close its doors and lay off my client. With no high school diploma and now no job, my client lost her house, her car, and unfortunately, her children and her sobriety. By the time I met my client, she had regained her sobriety, regained her children, and had been accepted into a communal living situation. And she started counseling with me as part of that communal housing. One of the sessions we had, she came in and she was frustrated and overwhelmed by the goals that she wanted to accomplish. She wanted to better herself, but she didn't know where to start. And she said, I just want to jump to the end. I just want to get there. I can see it. So I asked her, well, what does the end look like? And she said, this might sound silly, but I'll know I've made it when I have a set of keys. And she continued to explain to me that keys had always been a symbol of success to her. So since I brought a variety of art supplies, as I always do in my sessions, I asked her, why wait? What if we made your keys right now? And she took the art supplies and she immediately des started designing her keys. She designed a key for each goal that she wanted to accomplish. She designed each one carefully and with a smile. She made a key for a GD, a house key, a trade school key, a car key, a happy family key, and a sobriety key. As we were discussing her keys together, she was able to identify immediately the steps that she needed to take to achieve her goals and where to start. She looked down at her keys in her hand and she said, with these keys in my hand, I know I can do this. I can see how I get there. These are some of the first steps for my client to take in order to contribute more significantly to her community and gain the confidence to move forward. The last time I checked in with her, she had passed her GED test and she was applying for trade school. We can see how impactful art was for my client to gain clarity. And we did art together and hopefully felt a connection with one another. Creativity serves the self, but it also serves the community as a whole. Pocatello is doing their part to make art an important part of this community with the public murals highlighting local artists, the monthly art walks, and the other art events around town. Now imagine if there was art that also had a therapeutic component to it. Rural art therapy is actually not a foreign concept. In preparation for this talk, I was able to get connected with a member of the Montana chapter of the American Art Therapy Association. 
And she was able to identify at least 10 art therapists that have thriving private practices all over the state of Montana serving the communities. She enthusiastically shared with me how she has witnessed art therapy transform these communities and create connection out of isolation. All it takes is for art therapists to come, but also for the community to want it. So where do we go from here? For the one or two of you out there thinking, I need to be an art therapist, you can head over to the American Art Therapy Association's website and find a lot more information. And for those of you thinking, art therapy really could be powerful for me and my family, start asking for it. When you go to hospitals or clinics, ask for an art therapist. The more that we ask for it, the more hospitals and clinics will feel compelled to research and possibly hire an art therapist. And for those of you thinking, nope, art therapy is not my thing, that's okay too. I would encourage you to keep an open mind and just remember art therapy when your friend or your neighbor is confiding in you. It may not be for you, but it could be for them. Imagine a community that is not only healing, but also creating. If you want, I hope that you take your scribble drawing home with you today, and I hope that it serves as a reminder of this day and as art therapy as an option for our community. Imagine Pocatello being defined not by what it's lost, the businesses it's lost, but by its creating and its artistic power. Together we can make a new definition of Pocatello. Let's get creating. Thank you.